Hi, I'm Brian Santo, editor of CED Magazine. This is Demystifying Technology. Today we're talking about manifest manipulation. When a viewer with a tablet or a smartphone requests video from a service provider, the service provider determines if the viewer is authorized to get that content, and if the answer is yes, it delivers the first chunk of video. After that, the device is responsible for requesting each successive chunk, usually at the very best bitrate it can get them at. This is done by checking against a sort of playlist that shows the order of the chunks, where each chunk is stored, and the bit rates in which each chunk is available, along with other information. That list, that data, is the manifest. But what if the video provider wants to interrupt that stream, or has to? Video providers want to insert ads in content sent to various viewing devices. They need to insert alternate content in case there's a programming blackout. There's been a lot of talk about the client doing the ad insertion, but that has a lot of issues with scalability and security. If the provider wants to manage the insertion within the network, they need to manipulate the manifest. There are several ways to do that, with pluses and minuses for each. The first is called manifest conditioning. This is a key step in the ad insertion process and has to be done anyway. You place the eSAM, that's an event signaling and management trigger as specified by Cable Labs for processes like this. You place the eSAM right in the manifest and you do it while you're encoding your video. On the plus side, it's easy to manage and it can be done as you encode the video. The downside is that if this is all you do, then you're limited to whatever you encode, which pretty much means a national or limited number of zone-based ads. Approach number two is called playlist rewriting. You do this after encoding, and you do it by creating multiple versions of the manifests and storing them at the origin. For small number of variants, this can work well, but as ad and blackout groups don't overlap cleanly, you could rapidly end up getting way out of control with the number of manifests you're managing. There's a third option, customizing manifests on the fly. It's called Dynamic Manifest Manipulation, DMM, and this is Duncan Potter from Sewell to explain how it works. Thanks, Brian. With Dynamic Manifest Manipulation, every connection is treated as a virtual session. You can customize the manifest on the fly as it's delivered to the client on the device. This not only gives you the opportunity to insert an ad, but it allows you to do it not just based on zones, but on the individual's demographics. It also gives you the opportunity to implement blackouts and alternate content, and also to provide a whole level of policy enforcement, as well as customizing things like bit rates and fragment timers. So, Rather than denying the delivery of a uh, an HD fragment, for instance, to a smartphone which doesn't really need it, what you can ensure is that that smartphone only knows about those fragments that are really suitable for it to actually display. And the downside? When you're just dealing with Apple HLS to iOS devices, you can implement dynamic manifest manipulation without the need to touch the video fragments. However, with the other protocols that are out there, this can actually get quite tricky because of discontinuity. They expect to see the video fragments in sequence with the same encoder information. And this means that you actually have to adjust the container, uh, container format on the fly. This is really best done at the edge of the network as the video is actually sent to the device. So the combination of dynamic repackaging and policy enforcement along with DMM gives you a lot of capabilities to address and solve all of those problems. So you're doing multi-screen, you need to do the same old thing. Figure out your goals and adopt the appropriate equipment strategy. In the short term, yes. In the long term, I think everyone's going to want to look at this dynamic manifest manipulation capability because of all of the new network management capabilities that it brings you. It also gives you tremendous flexibility with content, with advertising, and with alternate content or blackout. But that means the industry will have to think very differently about the way that it delivers unicar streams to this ever broadening uh, set of devices. Thanks, Duncan. 
and that's Manifest Manipulation. I'm Brian Santo with CED and Demystifying Technology.